Okay, so for the first part of the uh, theorem, so it's, we're actually going to do a, uh, in a lemma, right? So for the first direction, we're going to show, hey, if spaces are isomorphic, then they have the same dimension. So, hmm, hungry. Are you hungry? Come on. Well, anyway, so lemma two says basically one direction. So we're going to start with this assumption, this sup sup uh, supposition, right? So if spaces are isomorphic, then it's going to lead us to conclude that they must have the same dimension. So we're going to show that an isomorphism of two spaces gives a correspondence between their bases, right? which makes sense, right? Based on our study of bases or, and, and um, their, their characterization, not characterizations, but the, um, how, they behave, how they behave, um, that makes sense to show that, right? Um, if we could show a correspondence between the bases, in other words, we are going to show that if f from v to w is an isomorphism and a basis for the domain v is given by this here, this vector, beta 1 through beta n, then its image d, which is given by this, um, f of beta 1 through f of beta n is a basis for the codomain w. Now, to see that d spans, so again, remember the two things. We've got to show that it spans and that it's linearly independent. Hmm. So, let's do spanning, then we'll do linear independence. To see that D spans, well, how do we show that? We want to show that D spans W. We're going to fix any vector W1, or excuse me, W, not W1. Fix any vector W in the vector space W. And because F is an isomorphism, it is onto. And there exists a vector in V such that we have W is equal to F of V. Okay? So, W is the image of a vector in V. Now, what we're going to do is then we can take V, right, because V is in what? V is in uh, V, right? So that means we can write V as a linear combination of the basis of the, of the base B. Why? Because we know we're given the fact that it's a base, a basis, and a basis spans the vector space, which means we can write it as a linear combination. All vectors can be written as a linear combination of this one. So all vectors in V can be written as a linear combination of these betas. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to expand V as a linear combination of basis vectors. And so we can write it this, this way. Okay? And since F is an isomorphism, it preserves structure. And so we can write it as a linear combination this way. So look at that. V1 times F of beta 1 plus all the way down to 2 plus uh, uh, V sub n times F of beta sub n. And there should be a plus on here. Okay? And that takes care of um, the spanning. Oh, one thing that, that I want to say is that um, now the other half of the correspondence uh, and I'm talking about here um,
right here. So that if, that is, we shall show that if F is an isomorphism and a basis for the domain B is given by this, then its image D is the basis for the codomain W. Now, what I want to make a note that the other half of the correspondence that for any basis of W, the inverse image is a basis for V follows from the fact that the inverse is also an isomorphism. And so we can apply, um, we can apply the, uh, that sentence to um, F inverse. Okay, so just, just realize that we could do that. Okay, so now, that takes care of spanning. Now, what about linearly, linear independence? Okay, so let's start by setting up the equation. Okay, so if Okay, so if the zero vector, right, <clears throat> is equal to linear combinations of these images, right, Okay, so we set up this um, this relationship. Now, because F is an isomorphism, it um, preserves linear combinations. And so now we can bring the C's in, right? And we can write this as F of um, C1 um, beta 1 plus all the way to C sub n beta sub n, right? Now, that since F is 1 to 1, and so the only vector sent to um, the zero vector, oh, by the way, this is 0 sub w, right, just for clarification. Okay, again, since f is 1 to 1, and so the, um, the only vector sent to 0 w is going to be 0 sub v, right, because it's 1 to 1. And so we have that what? How would I write this? <laughs> okay. Let's write this. We just let's write it. So since F is one to one, um the only vector that it's going to be sent to so only uh, so the only vector sent to O W is the zero vector from V. And we have
zero V is equal to what? C1 beta 1 plus all the way to C sub n times beta sub n right which implies all c sub i's are zero and we're done okay so again the zero vector from w uh, vector space w is equal to this which is equal to this right because f preserves linear combinations because it's an isomorphism and since f is one to one so there's so the only vector sent to the zero vector from w is going to be the zero vector from v and we have then v um, the zero vector from V is equal to this, which implies all the C's have to be equal to zero. Hence, linearly independent. So that means all the C's here are zero, and that means that the images right, which are the bases of D, so that means that they are linearly independent, and so we just showed that D is, that D spans W, and that those uh, vectors, those images, F of beta 1 through F of beta sub n are linearly independent, and that proves lemma 2.